Hello, welcome to OJ Studios. Please enjoy this short story, First Day of School, by Lacey Rice. I left my room wearing my Spider-Man pajamas, and I walked downstairs to the kitchen. This was the last day of summer. The last day I was going to be free until tomorrow and I have to go back to school. As I descended the stairs in my Spider-Man pajamas, the familiar scent of breakfast wafted through the air. The kitchen was filled with the warm glow of the morning sun, casting a golden hue on the worn tiles. My mom, with a hint of nostalgia in her eyes, was flipping pancakes on the griddle. Morning, Stephen, she greeted me with a smile, I grinned. Good morning mom! I said to her back. As I sat down at the table, I couldn't help but reflect on the adventures of the past summer, the bike rides with friends, late night movie marathons, and the endless games that seemed to stretch time itself. Tomorrow, the routine of school would take over, and the carefree days would become memories. My younger 8 year old sister, Emily, joined me at the table, still in her unicorn onesie. We exchanged a knowing look, both understanding that the end of summer meant the return to books, homework, and early mornings. But this was also going to be the last day of something else too. Last week Emily and I were bowling, and I made a stupid bet with her. It was a sunny Saturday afternoon, and Emily and I decided to spend the day at the local bowling alley. Mom took us there, but she decided not to bowl. Instead, she sat down cheering us both on. The colorful neon lights and the sound of crashing pins filled the air as we walked in, excitement bubbling within us. With our bowling balls in hand, we headed towards our assigned lane. The smell of popcorn and the lively chatter of other bowlers created a festive atmosphere. Emily was practically bouncing with anticipation. I showed her how to position her feet, aim for the pins, and release the ball. We giggled as we watched the ball wobble down the lane, sometimes knocking down a few pins, sometimes veering off course. Our laughter echoed through the alley. The competitive spirit kicked in, and soon we were engaged in a friendly sibling rivalry. Cheers erupted each time one of us scored a strike or managed a tricky spare. The joy on Emily's face whenever she knocked down a pin was priceless. As the game progressed, we experimented with different bowling techniques, from the classic two-handed approach to the exaggerated granny-style throw. We even tried a celebratory dance after each successful turn, much to the amusement of nearby bowlers. Then mom announced that it was our last game. Emily is the one who suggested the bet. Let's make it interesting, Emily proposed with a mischievous glint in her eyes. How about a bet? If I win, you have to be a girl for the whole school year. I raised an eyebrow, considering the absurdity of her suggestion. And if I win? A devilish grin spread across Emily's face. Then I'll be a boy for the whole school year. We both burst into laughter at the sheer ridiculousness of the bet. Mom, overhearing our conversation, chuckled and agreed, finding it a light-hearted way to mark the end of summer. Well, if you two want to make that agreement, then shake on it, whoever loses this game becomes the other gender. I looked at Mom, I know that she has the magical powers to do that. She was born as a spellcaster after all. But the question lingered in my head if I really wanted to do this. Fine. I said I was confident in my bowling skills. I put out my hand to shake Emily's and with a smile she shook my hand. The bowling game continued, each frame bringing us closer to the decisive moment. As the final frames approached, the stakes became higher, and the friendly banter about who was going to get a new brother or a sister, turned into focused determination. In the end, it was a close match, but Emily managed to secure a narrow victory with a triumphant strike in the last frame. I conceded defeat, realizing the consequences of the bet. So here I was, on the last day of summer, contemplating the inevitable fate of being a girl at school tomorrow and the rest of the year. For right now, however I am still a boy, I am still holding on to those last few hours of boyhood. The aroma of pancakes lingered in the air as mom set a plate in front of me, breaking my reverie. Emily sat in front of me, eating her pancakes and grinning at me. What are you smiling about? I asked. The fact that tomorrow, there will be two girls sitting at this table. She said smiling. Just think we will be wearing skirts together and mom can do both of our hairs, and… I cut her off. 
Why do I have to wear a skirt for? I asked. Most girls in my class wear the uniform slacks. Well. Mom said. I bought you both at the store, but you need to wear both. As I stared at my mom and sister, realization sank in, tomorrow would indeed mark the beginning of an unusual and unexpected chapter in my life. The bet made by my sister made it more real in my head. In my head I thought of it as I would go to school as a girl, but still wear boy clothes, still be a tomboy and never have to wear a skirt or even a dress during the whole school year, but now I knew I am going to be stuck wearing girls clothes all the time as a girl, including the girls uniform. The weight of the impending change settled on my shoulders as I finished my pancakes. The prospect of navigating school life as a girl suddenly felt more challenging than I had initially anticipated. Despite my initial confidence in the bet with my sister, the reality of being dressed in a way that didn't align with my comfort zone started to feel overwhelming. After breakfast, I retreated to my room, contemplating the upcoming transformation. The closet was still filled with my comfortable boyish attire but I know that tomorrow it will be filled with clothes for girls. I sighed, wondering how I would navigate this new chapter of my life. As the day progressed, I could hear laughter and chatter from Emily, who seemed excited about the prospect of having a sister for the school year. Mom had to keep reminding her that I wouldn't be her sister but instead her cousin. Mom, with her magical abilities, had already started planning the morning routine for both of us. The idea of having my hair done and wearing a skirt to school became increasingly daunting. I sat down at my desk and looked at the notes that I had written about the change. The cover story about why Stephen wasn't going to be at school this year, was because Stephen and my make-believe cousin Charlotte decided to trade homes with each other for the school year. The story will be that Stephen will be at a boarding school in Arizona, while Charlotte will be here, attending my school. But that was just the cover story. The name Charlotte was Emily's idea. When Mom Emily and I were talking about the cover story, Emily had asked what my name would be. I considered various names, names like Ashley, and Jessica. But Emily insisted on Charlotte, claiming it sounded sophisticated and perfect for the new me. Plus, the name Charlotte sounded like a good name unassuming name, I agreed, and Charlotte became the chosen name for the upcoming school year. In the midst of planning the cover story and grappling with the reality of the impending change, I began to jot down my thoughts and feelings in a journal. It became a private space for me to express the uncertainty, excitement, and fear that swirled within. There was a knock on my door. Before I could respond, Mom opened the door and came into my room. Hey Charlotte! She said using my new name even though I am still boy. Yes Mom! I said closing my notebook and putting it in my drawer. I think it's time to get you switched into your new body. She spoke. By doing it today you can get used to the new you, so it won't be awkward tomorrow at school. I looked at my mom, a mix of apprehension and curiosity in my eyes. The reality of the upcoming transformation was sinking in, and I couldn't deny the nerves that fluttered within me. Okay, mom, I replied, my voice carrying a hint of uncertainty. The prospect of becoming Charlotte, even for a day, felt like stepping into uncharted territory. Let alone a whole school year, Mom gestured towards the corner of the room where a magical looking mirror stood. I looked at it, seeing my reflection looking back at me. I looked at myself knowing that this would be the last time I would see my boy self until the end of the school year in May. Mom began to chant softly, invoking the spell that would bring about the change. The room shimmered with a subtle glow and a gentle breeze enveloped me. I felt a tingling sensation, as if an invisible force was molding and reshaping my form. The image in the mirror began to shift, revealing a reflection that was no longer Stephen but Charlotte. My hair changed its length and became an auburn color, and my features softened into a more feminine appearance. When the transformation was complete, I stood there, staring at the reflection of Charlotte in the mirror. It was an odd feeling, seeing myself as someone else entirely. Mom smiled warmly, proud of her magical abilities and the successful transformation. I reached up and touched my new hair noting how soft it felt. I smiled back at my reflection, a mixture of awe and self-discovery evident in my eyes. The reality of the transformation began to settle in, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of curiosity about the experiences that awaited me as Charlotte. I had a week to prepare myself to become a girl, 
yet all of this felt like a whirlwind. The anticipation and anxiety about the impending school year as Charlotte weighed heavily on my mind. As I stood in front of the magical mirror, I couldn't help but wonder how I would navigate the challenges of school life as a girl. My boy clothes were now a little too big for me, and I was glad that my Spider-Man pajamas had an elastic waistband on them so they wouldn't fall. Well, Charlotte, how do you feel? Mom asked. I hesitated for a moment, taking in the changes. It's... different. I mean, it's not bad, just unexpected, I admitted, trying to adjust to the reality of being Charlotte. Mom reassured me, you'll get used to it, dear. It's just for the school year, and who knows, maybe you'll find some fun in being Charlotte. I wanted to tell Mom that I doubt it, but I decided not to. Mom waved her hand and around me things started to change in my room, as it went from a boy's room to a girl's room. The walls were now painted in a soothing lavender hue, adorned with posters of colorful cartoon characters and whimsical fairies. A delicate aroma of vanilla lingered in the air. The bed, covered in a comforter adorned with dancing unicorns and rainbows, stood proudly against one corner. Fluffy stuffed animals were scattered across the bed. A worn-out teddy bear, missing an eye, sat proudly at the head of the bed, a testament to years of cuddles and bedtime stories that Charlotte must have had. My small wooden desk sat beneath a vibrant window adorned with sheer curtains that gently billowed in the breeze. The desk was a haven of creativity, littered with crayons, colored pencils, and stacks of drawings highlighting her vibrant imagination. A half-finished drawing of a smiling sun adorned with glitter glue caught my eye, evidence of an ongoing artistic masterpiece. In one corner, a bookshelf displayed an impressive collection of children's books, their spines worn from countless readings from classic fairy tales to adventures in far-off lands. But these were not my books as a boy, instead these were the books of a girl my age. Story like Charlotte's Web, Princess Books and Books for American Girl Dolls, were now on my bookshelf. A well-loved pink bean bag nestled beside the bookshelf, inviting anyone to sink into its plush comfort and get lost in the world of stories. The room echoed with the soft melody of a music box on the dresser. Next to it, a jewelry box housed a collection of trinkets and treasures, beaded necklaces, friendship bracelets, and net to that sat an American girl doll. The doll was dressed in a lacy pink dress with white tights and black Mary Janes. In my boy state I would not know who that was, but in my new girl form I now know that that is Samantha. Giving me proof that in my new girl form some girl knowledge was also given to me. As I stood there, taking in the whimsical charm of my new room. I could not help but feel the warmth and innocence that radiated from every corner. It was a sanctuary of dreams, a haven where imagination thrived, and the magic of childhood lived on. Your room is all set for Charlotte now, Mom announced. And don't worry, dear, I'll be here to guide you through everything. Tomorrow, when you go to school, you'll be just fine. I nodded, still trying to process the reality of the situation. My room, my appearance, and even my identity had undergone a magical transformation. As I looked around at the now girlish decor, a mix of emotions swirled within me. Oh, and one other thing. Mom said, stopping me from leaving. She waved her hand in front of me, and I could feel the clothes that I was wearing, change from boy clothes to girls clothes. The soft fabric draped around me, and I looked down to see a cute and colorful outfit that matched the newly transformed room. Mom had changed my attire into a pastel-colored skirt with a matching top, complete with white ankle socks and a pair of pink tennis shoes. There you go, Charlotte, all ready for your first day as a girl, Mom exclaimed with a satisfied smile. I touched the hem of the skirt, still adjusting to the idea of wearing such attire. The reality of the bet made by my sister now felt tangible, and I could not escape the fact that I was about to embark on a journey into an unfamiliar world. Why a skirt? I asked. Mom chuckled, well, Charlotte, it's just part of the experience. Besides, it will get you used to being a girl, and you need to get used to wearing skirts. I sighed, I know she was right, but I still hated the idea of wearing this. I began to leave my room, but Mom stopped me. Oh, and another thing Charlotte. I turned around and Mom walked over to me and put her hand on my forehead. I felt the shock and then mom pulled her hand away. 
What was that for Aunt Laura? I asked then stopped. I had just called my mom Aunt Laura. Why? I changed your mind slightly this way you can be able to interact better as Charlotte and not worry about having to remember the backstory we made up for you. I will do the same with Emily. As I processed the sudden change in my thoughts and memories, the realization sank in that I now had an unfamiliar perspective and understanding of the world. The mental adjustments felt strange, like pieces of a puzzle rearranging themselves to fit a new picture. Mom, now Aunt Laura, observed my puzzled expression and explained, I just tweaked a few memories, dear. It will help you navigate your new identity as Charlotte more smoothly. Now, go ahead and explore your transformed room. Get comfortable in your new surroundings. Aunt Laura left the room, and I was free to look around. With a deep breath, I took a step forward, feeling the soft carpet beneath my feet. The room embraced me with its girlish charm, and I couldn't help but marvel at the level of detail mom put into creating this magical space. As I explored the room, my fingers traced over the delicate pages of the children's books on the shelf. The characters and stories were unfamiliar to my previous self, yet now they felt like a part of me. I picked up a book titled Charlotte's Web and couldn't help but smile at the coincidence of the chosen name. The music box on the dresser played a sweet melody, and I opened it to find a tiny ballerina twirling gracefully. It was another charming detail that added to the enchantment of the room. Feeling a bit overwhelmed, I sat down on the pink bean bag, surrounded by stuffed animals and the comforting scent of vanilla. My mind raced with thoughts about the challenges awaiting me at school, the new friendships I would form, and the experiences that lay ahead. Aunt Laura entered the room, her warm smile reassuring. How are you feeling, Charlotte? I pondered for a moment before responding, it's a lot to take in, but I guess I'll be fine. That's the spirit, Aunt Laura encouraged. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. Emily is excited to have her cousin Charlotte, and I'm here to support you every step of the way. Mom helped me up from the bean bag chair and we both walked to the door of the room. I stopped for a moment knowing that on the other side of the door was going to be Emily waiting to see me. As I took a deep breath, Aunt Laura opened the door, revealing Emily standing there with an eager grin on her face. She was already dressed in her outfit for the day, and excitement sparkled in her eyes. Charlotte! Emily exclaimed, rushing forward to give me a tight hug. You look amazing! I cannot believe you are going to be my cousin for the whole school year! And I cannot believe that you're actually a girl! Believe it, I said hugging her back! For better or worse I am now a girl! The next morning, my eyes fluttered open as the first rays of sunlight streamed through my curtains. Groggily, I sat up in bed and rubbed the sleep from my eyes. The first day of school and the first full day of me being Charlotte awaited me. With a yawn, I swung my legs over the edge of the bed and let my feet touch the cool floor. Padding over to the window, I peeked outside to see the world waking up. Birds were chirping, and the neighborhood was slowly coming to life. Heading to the bathroom, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. My messy hair stuck out in all directions, the boy part of me wasn't used to my hair being messy in the morning, but the part of me that mom changed to be like Charlotte was. I grabbed a brush and attempted to tame the unruly locks, creating order from chaos. The Charlotte part of my head was able to do this quite well. Next on the agenda was the bathroom routine. I splashed my face with water, trying to shake off the last remnants of sleep. Toothpaste, toothbrush, a quick dance to my favorite morning tune playing in my head, my morning ritual was well underway. Downstairs in the kitchen, the aroma of breakfast greeted me. Aunt Laura was already at work in the kitchen. Pancakes sizzled on the griddle and the scent of maple syrup filled the air. I couldn't help but grin. Pancake mornings were the best. I see you're getting used to your new body. Aunt Laura said, putting the pancakes in front of me. I nodded, taking a seat at the table. Yeah, it's... different. But I guess I'll get used to it. Aunt Laura smiled warmly, it's a big adjustment, but you're doing great, Charlotte. Just remember, you have our support and we're here for you. As we enjoyed our breakfast, Emily bounced into the kitchen, her excitement infectious. Morning, Charlotte! Are you ready for your first day as my cousin? I chuckled, as ready as I'll ever be, 
Emily. Once I finished, I started up from my room, but Aunt Laura stopped me. Before you go up there, I just wanted to warn you that I already picked out your uniform for the day. I sighed already knowing what was going to happen. You picked out a skirt didn't you? I asked. Aunt Laura grinned mischievously, confirming my suspicion. Well, of course, Charlotte. It's all part of the experience. Besides, you need to embrace the full transformation. You look adorable in it. With a resigned sigh, I headed back to my room to see what outfit Aunt Laura had chosen. As I opened the door, I was met with a sight that made me groan internally. There it was, a neatly pressed skirt, accompanied by a matching blouse. I carefully selected my underwear for the day noting how weird girls' underwear is compared to boys' boxers. I slipped them on and then slipped each arm the blouse, I buttoned each button with some ease even though the buttons were on the opposite side that I was used to. Aunt Laura had picked out a pair of white tights for me to wear. I looked at them wondering how I was going to put them on, but then the Charlotte part of my mind kicked in and I rolled up each leg and put them on my feet like a pro. Once done I looked down and saw that my feet were now encased in the white opaque tights. The skirt followed, its pleats falling gracefully as I fastened it around my waist. I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror, the uniform giving me a sense of identity. It was like putting on a shield, preparing to face the challenges and adventures that awaited me in the day ahead. Completing the ensemble, I stepped into my new black Mary Jane shoes, I couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement. School held the promise of knowledge, friendships, and the thrill of discovery. I ran a brush through my hair, deciding on a simple ponytail for the day. My reflection stared back at me, a student ready to embrace the opportunities that lay ahead. With my backpack slung over my shoulder, I descended the stairs to find Emily already in her uniform and mom with her camera looking up the stairs at me. Look at my two lovely girls! Mom exclaimed, capturing the moment with her camera. Emily beamed, posing proudly in her uniform, while I couldn't help but feel a mixture of awkwardness and acceptance. Smile, Charlotte! Mom urged, and I mustered a hesitant smile for the camera. As we gathered near the front door, Mom handed us each a lunchbox. Aunt Laura's special sandwiches for her special girls, she said, and I couldn't help but appreciate the effort she put into making our first day memorable. Mom drove us to the elementary school, the anticipation building with every passing moment. I fidgeted nervously in the back seat, my new uniform feeling both foreign and oddly comforting. As we arrived at the school, the hustle and bustle of students and parents filled the air. Emily and I stepped out of the car, both wearing our uniforms, albeit with different feelings about the day ahead. The school building loomed in front of us, its familiar structure now holding a different significance for me. I took a deep breath, reminding myself that this was just a temporary transformation, a unique experience that would shape my perspective. Emily, on the other hand, seemed to be reveling in the excitement. She tugged at my arm, urging me to walk with her towards the school entrance. The whispers and curious glances from other students didn't go unnoticed, but Emily's enthusiasm was infectious. We entered the school, and I felt a mix of apprehension and curiosity. Both Emily and I walked in front of Mom as we made our way to the school's office. The hallways echoed with the sounds of chatter and laughter, and the occasional locker slams. Once we got to the office, we could see that the office was a hub of activity. There was a lot of parents and students and they're trying to change which teacher they have or trying to pay for the school lunches for the school year. Aunt Laura bent down in front of Emily and told her to go ahead to her third grade classroom. Emily begged mom to let her stay with her, but mom told her to go on and that she would see her after school. Emily looked a little sad but then walked away as she was told. Aunt Laura then turned to me, her eyes filled with warmth and reassurance. You got this, Charlotte! Just go to the front desk, let them know you're a new student, and they'll guide you to your classroom. If you need anything, don't hesitate to ask, okay? I nodded, mustering a brave smile. Taking a deep breath, I approached the front desk, where a friendly receptionist greeted me. Hello there! How can I help you? Um, hi, I began, feeling a bit self-conscious in my new uniform. I'm Charlotte, and I'm a new student. It's my first day! The receptionist's face lit up with a welcoming smile. Ah, Charlotte! 
Welcome to our school. We're so happy to have you. Let me check your information, and I'll guide you to your class. As the receptionist verified my details, I couldn't help but glance around at the students passing by. Some exchanged curious glances, and I overheard a few whispers, but most seemed focused on their own conversations and activities. After a brief check-in process, the receptionist handed me a paper with my new teacher's name, room number, and pointed me in the direction of my fifth grade classroom. Aunt Laura gave me an encouraging nod, and with a deep breath, I made my way down the hallway. Entering the classroom, I felt a mix of nerves and curiosity. The teacher, Mrs. Johnson, greeted me warmly and introduced me to the class. I felt a little awkward standing in front of the class while wearing the skirt, the tights, and the blouse. Once the teacher was done asking me questions, I took a seat at an empty desk, the students turned to look at me. Whispers and hushed conversations filled the air. I looked over to my best friends Cody and Adam. Well best friends back when I was Steven. Now I have to pretend that I don't know them, and all they see is a new girl in their class. As I settled into my desk, Mrs. Johnson continued with the class activities. The students around me seemed friendly enough, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being in an unfamiliar territory. The rustle of papers in the home of conversations created a background noise that emphasized my newness. Cody and Adam glanced my way a few times, their expressions a mix of curiosity. Last week after I lost the bet, I told them that my mom was making my cousin and I trade homes for the school year. So they now they think that I am just my own cousin. Man, they would freak out if they knew the new girl was really me. I tried my best to focus on the lesson, but the awareness of their scrutiny lingered in the back of my mind. During the break, I hesitated to join any group of students, feeling like an outsider. However, a girl named Lily approached me with a friendly smile. Lily was one of the popular girls. I have known her since kindergarten, and she always tries to make every new kid feel special. I guess it's my turn. Of course she doesn't know that the girl standing in front of her is really the same boy that teased her about her about her pigtails last year. Hi, Charlotte, right? Lily asked, and I nodded. Cool, I'm Lily. Want to join us for recess? We usually hang out by the swings. I appreciated Lily's welcoming gesture and agreed, hoping that mingling with new friends would ease the initial awkwardness. As we walked to the playground, Lily introduced me to her friends, and the atmosphere became more relaxed. The rest of the day unfolded with a mix of challenges and small victories. Navigating the school as Charlotte, interacting with new classmates, and adapting to the dynamics of the 5th grade classroom required a constant mental adjustment. Lunchtime was another adventure, as I tried to make sense of the cafeteria layout and figure out where to sit. Despite the initial discomfort, the supportive environment of Lily and her friends made the day more enjoyable. As the school day came to an end, I joined Emily in the courtyard, and we walked together to the car where Aunt Laura was waiting. How was your first day, Charlotte? Aunt Laura asked, her eyes filled with concern and warmth. It was. Interesting. I replied, trying to sum up the whirlwind of experiences. Definitely different from anything I've known before. Emily chimed in, I told all my friends that you're my cousin, and they were so excited to meet you. Did you make any new friends as Charlotte? I smiled, grateful for Emily's enthusiasm. Yeah, I met Lily and her friends. They're nice. It made the day better. As we drove back home, I reflected on the challenges and surprises of the first day as Charlotte. The reality of being a girl at school had its ups and downs, but the support from Aunt Laura and Emily, as well as the newfound friendships, provided a silver lining. Today was just the first day of school, and I wondered what tomorrow was going to be like as a girl.